edition of Hadley Matters. Here we are at your beautiful new public library and I'm about to go in to meet the library staff and we'll have a tour of the library and have a chat with the director Patrick. So off we go. Oh look who's here. Hey Sharon how are you? Well Patrick how are you? Good. Come on in. Okay thank you. Wow, so, nice lobby. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the Hadley Public Library. I'm glad you can make it. Thank you. So uh, I guess we're just going to have a little tour here through the building and uh, point out the highlights of what you can expect when you come into the library. So here we are in the, the main lobby. Uh, we have restrooms over here. We have meeting spaces. We have two meeting spaces, a small separate room here and a large meeting room down here that will be available after hours to the public and during business hours. We can't offer after hours meeting room space quite yet. We have some technical problems that we need to work out, but that's in the works. So we're really excited to allow the community to use those spaces for their meetings and activities, whatever they can dream up. Um, so come on through. I'd like to introduce you to the staff. Let me introduce you to the staff. So, Susan Brown, Assistant Director of the Library, Luna Greenwood, Children's Librarian. <laughs> and, and we have two uh, patrons of the two library Two patrons here. of the library here. Good. So why don't you come down here, I'll show you how this things are laid out in the smart. library. First off, when you come in through the main doors, what you'll find is the new book table. So this is all of our oh. new fiction that's been added uh, in the last couple of months. Okay, I want this one. <laughs> yep, grab them while they're here. Uh, we have the new nonfiction and uh, new DVDs, uh, new music CDs, uh, our staff picks shelf, which we keep replenishing all the time. Oh, right here? Staff picks right here. Uh -huh. uh, we have a little bit of just sort of, you know, uh, collections of, of current interest, you know, relevant to the season, wherever we are. Oh, nice. Uh, so we've got gardening right now, but we do, you know, all kinds of things, things throughout the year. Black History Month. Whatever it is that we have to for the times. This is all new nonfiction. This is the That's new, new nonfiction. New non yep. Okay, and this is seasonal stuff. Seasonal stuff, it just changes. New DVDs. Oh. Uh, we've got all of our periodicals over here. Oh, this adult periodicals here. Uh, and then we've got our wall of movies, the wall of DVDs, all of the DVDs that people will remember from the Goodwin Library, which were there in the, the main room. We've got them all here finally so you can see them all in one place. Terrific. Um, we've got documentaries down here, music CDs, our audiobook collection, and then we have just a lot of reading space. Areas where people can spread out with the newspaper or a book or a laptop and do whatever they please. Now does the library have its own computer? So we do have public computers. We have uh, computers here in the adult room. We have uh, computers in the children's room, computers in the young adult room for that. all age ranges to use. Good. So come on down here. Okay. We've got the, uh, got the reading area here. Oh, this well, light, light space. Yep. Patrick. Great place to uh, to sit down and read a book, read the paper. Yeah. Whatever. Chat, really nice. Chat with your neighbors. And these are your. These are the audiobooks. Audio books on CD. Yeah. Uh huh. And we have uh, a nice collection of those, kind of bursting at the seams. Now, do you in your fiction section, some yes. libraries separate particular genre, like mysteries or something? Are you doing any of that, or is it? Yes, yeah, so that's a great question. We don't really tend to do that here. We talk about it sometimes, and the pros and cons of that are um, kind of the biggest con is that there are a lot of things that don't fit strictly into any one genre, yes. uh, particularly nowadays. So it's, it's hard for people to know where to look. So we mm -hmm. tend to just sort of rely on, um, and we need to kind of keep working on this, but we rely on genre labels okay. uh, so that people can see at a glance what, you know, what, okay. what's considered a mystery or what's considered science fiction, historical fiction, that kind of thing. Nice, yeah, yeah. On that. Now these would be more study carols more, Yeah, here. more study carols, more, uh, more quiet seating. You're not gonna let me take my coffee back there, are you? <laughs> We're pretty easy. Oh, good to know. So why don't you come on down this way? We'll go down to uh, the other end of the building. Great right space, Patrick. I'm very happy here. Uh, 
So let me point this out. This is the, uh, the Margaret Freeman Open History Room. Named for Margaret Freeman, who uh, unfortunately passed away last year, I believe. Uh, and her friends and family have donated in her memory, and this room will be named after uh, oh, Margaret. Yeah. The handy resident, I assume. Yes, yes. She was on the historical commission and uh, many other, involved in many other things in town. Good. Okay. Great. Come on down this way. Uh, so this is the, the staff areas are back there. We've got a you know, receiving hall for our interlibrary loan deliveries. We have a, uh, a staff room for our breaks, a little mm -hmm. kitchen, which is wonderful to have. Uh, work room for all of our, you know, behind the scenes work. Mm -hmm. And uh, my office is back there in the corner. You can come around the corner in the stacks and surprise me and knock on the door and I'd be happy to talk to you anytime. Nice. Surprise! <laughs> and what is all this? So we have, uh, we have a lot of these, this is essentially storage for library supplies, printer oh. paper, that sort of thing. This is really considered like the Hello, business center of the library, so when people okay, come in and make their copies you? and uh, you know, they want to staple and collate oh, and no. paper clip, yeah. then oh, you'll be able to uh, have those materials totally. here for people, and that's oh, I something that's on the way. This is, our, this is what serves as our public printer, oh, yeah. which if you print from oh, the computers, the public computers, it comes to this printer, so you can pick up your own, mm -hmm. uh, pick up your own copies. Oh, um, and uh, yeah, so this is sort of a work in progress as well. <laughs> Over here we have the friends room. The friends of the library do a lot for us as an organization. We are involved in um, supporting our programs financially. They help publicize our programs. And um, so they also, are, do you have that new, you know, uh, they, have, oh, they have book sales periodically. So um, you know, we've got room in there for them to have this act as like just a, a standing book sale. They mm -hmm. don't have to do it now outside and oh, set nice. tables. They can just have people come in and buy yep. stuff right off the shelf. Yeah. Great. Yep. All right. So I'm going to let Luna take you into the children's room and show you around. Welcome. Here Hi. I am. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to the children's room. We're very excited about this. Let's see. Over here, we have um, fiction and nonfiction. And a wonderful bathroom, the best in the building. <laughs> I'll remember that. <laughs> yeah, it's got really nice tile. Oh, wow. <laughs> See what I mean? It's pretty nice. I give it whimsical, Luna. Yeah, it's got Tetris tiles. <laughs> Step this way, please, to my favorite part of the building. We'll walk through the picture book section. This is Oh, I love this one. Very good book. Okay. <laughs> These are our new books. Wonderful display options in this building. We have lots of space, so um, we have picture books and fiction, all, all new. And then over here, a new. This is a fun like little hangout place. You can read or color hang out and it's very sunny. We can look at the senior center out there. And that's a beautiful crab apple tree. It's just a baby now, but um, someday it'll be amazing. Maybe in 10 years. Over here, we have um, a large board book, uh, large board book section. And um, there you can see for our graphic novels are up here. Graphic novels, plus our most popular collection in this room. And come on over here. I'll show you our very exciting uh, preschool room. It's this way. Hi, everybody. You're, on a mo you're in a movie now. Oh, hi. <laughs> this is our preschool room. We've got a train table. We've got um, some picture books on display. We've got a new little lammy that you haven't even. I haven't even seen I the know. rocking lamb. We have a rocking lammy and a rocking dog. Those are, 
Anyway, someday we'll have lots of toys and things to do in here. It's going to be very exciting. It's like the six and under playroom. You can um, bring your lunch and have some snacks or something on these tables. There's a sink to wash your hands. And there's some exciting cabinets in here. And you can go in these cabinets and you can find some bigger books. Oh. Uh, yeah. So there you have that. <laughs> what else is in here? Paper for drawing on. Lots of fun things. Here's a puppet. <laughs> anyway, we have um, we have something that's exciting, but not quite yet. It's going to be a little children's garden. It's going to be out here, and it'll be safe. It'll be fenced in. Um, it just isn't going to happen until this fall. So take a little peek. This will all be a children's garden uh, eventually. So we could, um, yeah, come out here and do programming. So you get, uh, so much more space and so much more opportunity than you had. Yes, the children's room really, yeah, we, we didn't have much space in the old building. Right. And now we've got um, tons of space. Mm -hmm. And you've got I as much space as the adults, really. Yes, I pretty much do. So get your grandkids We have a lot here. of room for <laughs> getting new books and, uh, yeah, display options and stuff. It's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any new programs you're thinking about, Luma? I know, as Patrick and I say, it's a work in progress. Yeah. Well, we're definitely going to do the old story time and sing-along groups and Good. maybe some book clubs for older kids. Oh. None of this has happened yet because of the pandemic. Of course. But that'll be coming soon. Mm -hmm. And um, during the summer, we'll, we'll have some uh, a program um, called Art on the Go, which is going to be take-home crafts. Oh. And that's um, funded by the Hadley Cultural Council. That's wonderful. So they gave us some money so we can do that. We got a little grant. We got a little grant to buy art supplies. So we're going to put together little kits. Like you yeah. could um, yeah. call ahead and get a kit to go, and that'll be nice. I love it. And yeah. we're hoping to do um, a cornhole tournament for families. <laughs> that's in the planning stages. Super. Maybe a tie-dyeing program. Wow. Yeah. You guys are just throwing ideas out there. Yeah, like, we it's are. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an ideas person. That's great. So I mean, Patrick needs you, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, we we ukulele. had a very popular ukulele group. Oh, go, go, yes. And, yeah, that was really fun. Um, if I start that up again, it won't be the same group. It'll be back to um, ukulele 101 for absolute beginners. It'll be... A completely new thing. And it's for children? It'll be for anybody who wants to play. I'll get my baritone you yes. now. Mostly right? it was actually adults because kids don't have lots of patience to uh, learn an instrument. It's a lot of work in the beginning. Sure. But ukulele is one of the easiest instruments to learn. So that's why. That's why I play it. Yeah. <laughs> we got a grant um, to buy, I think we own six ukuleles. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Our Are library. they tenor or baritone? They're just soprano. Just the tenor. Just a soprano. Oh, the soprano. Yeah. Sorry. You can check one out if you want. <laughs> well, I have a baritone, but then I could play duets, right? Yeah. One on each hand? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome to join our group. Anyone, Thank you. Anyone is. We haven't started that because of the pandemic, but um, mm -hmm. that's definitely going to be exciting and fun. And I think it'll be great to have um, new people come in and yeah. le learn how to do it. Yeah. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks, everybody. That's come great. on by the library. Bring your kids. <laughs> Okay, where are we right, are? Let's go into the, or the, sorry, the young adult room. Young adult. Tell this me is what the, an age range uh, on young adult is, Patrick. So there's no real hard and fast definition of what a young adult is. It's okay. really kind of more uh, state of mind. Everybody gets to young adulthood at their own, you know, at their own pace. Is that um, why you and I can go in there? That's now? why we can go in there, <laughs> yes. Um, so we, it really, it depends. It, you know, if, if the things that interest a, a child at that age are in that room, then that's where they're going to go. We have a lot of graphic novels in there. We have graphic novels for younger kids here. But you tend to find you know, kids going between the spaces looking for the things that are relevant to their to their interests. Nice. So, um, so can we so just sit down and talk let's, in there? Let's go on and have a, have a chat. Yeah. I like your furniture in here. Yes. <laughs> So this is this is one of the one of our favorite rooms in the building, um, just because it, it it turned out so nicely. We're happy with 
the furniture and the colors and the lighting. We think this is going to be a great place for um, have the young people to come and hang out after school during the summer, whenever they whenever they like. So Patrick, I have to say that after our preliminary conversation to see what you wanted to do, the phrase that came to me about you was library rat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know lab rats. Uh-huh. Okay, now I see like, where you're going with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It feels like you have been in a number of library situations. Am I correct in that? Sure. So I have worked in libraries since I was a senior in high school in suburban Atlanta. Um, and since then, I've worked in um, both public libraries, large and small, uh, as well as college and university libraries. Um, I've been here in Hadley since, in one form or fashion, since 2009, and I became the director in 2014. Um, and uh, ever since day one of becoming the director here, we have been involved in the process of getting this new library built. At that time, we had applied for a grant, a planning and design grant, to do the feasibility study. Uh, and uh, I've lost track of what year it was, but uh, about three years ago, we wrote the grant for the construction portion and received $3.9 million from the Board of Library Commissioners to build this library, which we're now sitting in. And um, so, yeah, that's. Yeah, that's, that's you. That's the story. <laughs> Do you, can you tell? What is, attracts you to this field, this kind of work in a library? I think for me it was um, finding as a young person that it was uh, a lot more of an enjoyable environment to be in than some of the other typical teenage jobs that you would have in high school. And um, then from there, rather than it early on being any sort of sense of vocation, it was more the convenience of that, you know, when you're young you move a lot, for, for different life reasons, and it was always very convenient having this, you know, background to be able to go into another library, whether it was another college library or um, a city library in Providence, Rhode Island, for instance. Um, so that's just sort of how it happened, and then at a certain point I decided, decided I needed to, you know, take the leap and get my master's degree in library science and do this quote-unquote professionally rather than just as a paid hobby. Where'd you go for that, Patrick? Simmons, Simmons College. Oh, over in, around the Boston area. Simmons, is, yeah, Simmons is in Boston, but they have a satellite campus at uh, Mount Holyoke, which made it a lot more convenient for me to do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Talk to me or talk to us a little bit about your staff. Who works here? Who volunteers here? What's the nature of volunteering? All of that. Oh, sure, yeah. So we, there's about a half a dozen of us. Um, Sue, the assistant director, Luna, children's librarian, Karen Coles, circulation assistant, Audra Swayton, young adult, um, no, actually youth services coordinator, um, and uh, Tallulah Patnode, who is our library page. Uh, am a I forgetting? Page? That's it. That's everybody, right? What's a page? So, library page is sort of actually that's that's the job that I had when I was a high school student shelving uh, shelving library books. Got it. So yeah, yeah. it's better better than uh, being called a shelver. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds like shoveling coal. How do you see yourself as director? Is it a, are you a top-down kind of, are you a team kind of guy? What, how do you see your role here? It's very much collaborative. There's uh -huh. no, you know, it's, it's obviously a very small staff, so there's not really, it's not really, um, I mean, the staff may feel differently, but I think it's like, it's very much about um, sort of all hands on deck and everyone doing whatever is needed in the moment to, um, to help the public. So we all do a little of everything. There's a, there's a real uh, atmosphere here in Hadley that I've run across in these interviews mm -hmm. that um, people don't seem power hungry, if you will, but more there's a whole collaborative, to use your word, and team effort. And I find that admirable. I don't know how Sue finds it. Maybe she wants more direction, but... <laughs> That was a tease. Yeah, I know, that's a tease. Yeah, yeah. I know. But I, in fact, I'm, I'm thinking about how my performance evaluation is uh, currently oh. underway. So yeah, we'll find out soon. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I I agree with that in the sense that um, you know we, we this couldn't have happened having this building built um, in as short a time as it was 
it, that could not have happened unless we had uh, an incredibly collaborative spirit in town yes. that allowed people to come together, form committees, do the work, you know, whatever came at us to tackle it, you know, and um, so you're, you're completely right. It, it wouldn't have happened mm -hmm. if, it, if it was just infighting and, and ego. That's lovely. It really is. Um, I was going to say, you all don't know because you were not part of the tour about where Patrick and I are sitting right now. Want to share? Sure. So that? we are actually in the young adult room, um, which is an area that is, you know, essentially for high school kids, older middle school age kids. Um, and it's this is, I think, collectively, the staff, I think we all kind of share the feeling that this is one of the one of our favorite spaces in the building. And so we're really excited to have a room for those kids to come and use the library after school, during the summer, whenever they'd like to, you know, come over and study, to just hang out, play video games, read, um, whatever, whatever makes them happy. But it's a great space and we think that they're really going to love it. So we're very excited to, um, actually I should just say now since it's, you know, kind of coming up, we are going to be open as of next week. Right now we're currently open by appointment, but next week we're going to be open six days a week, our normal hours, no appointments, you just walk in. Um, so Terrific. we welcome the community into the library. We're very happy to have people just coming to visit us in the way that, uh, the way that they used to over at the Goodwin. You're returning to some normalcy. It sounds like. I, yeah, I hope so. Look, no masks. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick and I have agreed on that because it would be too hard to hear us there. Yes. Yeah. So if you look ahead, Patrick, what are the big items on your plate and your plate with the staff that you feel like you're going to attack now as opposed to in a year from now? Luna uh, yeah. talked um, about the space out there, which as I assume... There is an outdoor space off the preschool room, mm -hmm. and they're hoping to make that into a fenced-in area where programming for children might happen. But I'm assuming that's a little ways off, and you've got things on your plate right now, like don't let things fall off the wall because they're under warranty, which you'll understand when you see Luna in the children's restroom. <laughs> yeah, so, whoa, our filming. <laughs> I fell off. Okay. Don't, don't worry about it. Yeah, don't, <laughs> that's don't take that. That's a warranty issue. Yeah. So what are the big things on the plate? Well, uh, I think right now, just because things are moving so fast with reopening the library and having the public in, mm -hmm. we're sort of in a, this is kind of an experimental mode. I mean, we all know what it's like to, to work in a library and to serve the public, but we don't know in a new building how, what to expect in terms of you know how busy it will be um, and and also in a new space we don't know how the public will react to the space we don't know how the public is going to want to use this building in ways that are different from the old library so at this point we're just sort of welcoming people in trying to understand um, how the building works what issues people will have when they come into the building and then responding to those but we have there's still a lot of work to be done as far as setting up the library. There's still parts, um, as Sharon alluded to, like things like the outdoor children's garden that need to be completed. So you know there's still a lot of um, setting up visits from contractors to give us quotes. There's just a lot of work that still uh, needs to be done, even though the building is, you know, 90% of the of the way done. And when you look in, you think it's a finished building, but there's just always more to do. Mm -hmm. So right now. And again, because we are we are a small staff, we are kind of we're not being overly ambitious in the sense that we just want to see what life is like when the public returns before we get you know incredibly um, ambitious with programming and other sorts of other sorts of things. It's, we're still kind of at the tail end of a pandemic, so we don't know how people feel about coming out and participating in programs yet. We'll we'll sort of see it as we as we go. It sounds like a very wise approach, frankly, because, you know, we all have our big dreams and mm -hmm. sometimes we need to just back off a little. Yes. Since they were not part of the tour, I was interested if you would just kind of list down, starting down there on the west end of the building with that mm -hmm. lovely reading chat space, whatever that is, mm -hmm. and just tell everybody what the different 
parts of the building are? Sure. Well, why don't I describe it from, from the way we did it with the tour so that people know what they would find when they walk into the front doors of the library. So when you arrive at the library and get out of your car and come in through the main uh, entrance doors, right at the main entrance you'll see um, one of the things that we're most excited about, which is a built-in book drop right in the wall where you can open the flap and put your book or your DVD in outside of the library at any hour. Um, and it's great for us because we don't have to go out in the snow and the rain to empty it. <laughs> um, so that is a, a great improvement that we're, makes our lives easier. I don't know if it makes anybody else's lives easier, but we are thrilled about that. So as soon as you walk in the doors, you'll be in a, a lobby off of which there are two meeting rooms, a small study room and a large, uh, larger meeting room. Um, the larger one is actually the Kate Nugent Memorial uh, Community Room. Uh, and that will, both of those rooms are available or will be available for after hours use. So even when the library is not open, people will be able to reserve those two spaces, swipe themselves in, use the room, and then leave the library and, and the building will be secure. We're not able to offer that yet for technical reasons, but again, that's another thing that we're working on and um, hopefully that will be available soon. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you yeah, I Kate Nugent, I, ca I caught the name, but I yes. don't know. So Kate Nugent was uh, a select board member for the Hadley Select Board who passed away at this point, I think it's probably ten, about 10 years ago. Um, and she left uh, a sizable bequest to the library specifically. And so we have used that money with the agreement of uh, her family to name that space, the large meeting room, because we thought it was a very fitting use of that, of that gift. Lovely, good. Okay, so you come in, yes, you have so the meeting rooms. So you have the two meeting rooms, the lobby, the restrooms are off of the lobby. And then from there you come in another set of double doors, interior doors into the main space of the lobby or into the main space of the library. And directly in front of you, there is a large desk. That's the adult circulation desk, which also has a book drop cut in it. So you can return your, your items there if you'd like. Uh, and that is where you would do most of your transactions. So if you have something to check out or holds, to pick up, you would uh, you would go to the desk, and the staff will help you there. Uh, to the left, if you turn left, you'll immediately see the new book table. It's the old round book table that you remember from the Goodwin Library if you used to come in. Uh, and so we're still using that table. Uh, adjacent to that, we have another display area with uh, new nonfiction, new movies, uh, our staff picks. Um, a few other you know, collections of seasonal interests that we rotate depending on the time of year. And then adjacent to that we have periodicals. We have uh, all of our magazine subscriptions are up where you can see the current issue uh, face out, back issues underneath. Uh, a little further down you would see a number of um, seating area, wooden, like wooden tables where you can sit and read the newspaper, read a book, open a laptop. Uh, our public computers are down that way as well. Uh, then you're approaching the stacks, the fiction and nonfiction stacks, which has you know our entire collection from next door with plenty of room to grow. So we're really excited about that. And then just beyond that, there is the adult reading area, which is uh, you know a half a dozen or how many chairs is it? Four, six, four right now. Uh, lounge chairs where you can sit under the natural light of the big high windows that face Middle Street uh, and read or chat with your neighbors. Um, and so there, there are other things that I'm not describing, but that, that's, that's the general layout, yeah. and there's a lot more to see when you actually get here. Uh, if we turned around and came back to the circulation desk and then kept going back towards the senior center, you would come to the children's room, which is a kind of a glass partitioned uh, area to kind of keep children in and keep noise in. Uh, and the children's area is, you know, a, a great addition to the library because we didn't really have a proper children's department in the old Goodwin. It was sort of a mixed space of adult things and children's things. And this gives us a nice separation so that kids can be kids and make a lot of noise and not disturb adults who are reading. Um, so also in that space we have a, a, an activity room that we call the preschool room or the story room where we will have story times, craft activities, that sort of programming. Um, 
and I think that that's about the end. Oh, and I'm forgetting about this room, the, the young, young adult room, but I think I already spoke to that, yeah. Um, I also think you might want to mention the Friends Room and the yes. local history. We also have the Margaret Freeman local history room, uh, named in honor of Margaret Freeman by members of her family and, and friends. Uh, we have the Friends, uh, the Friends Room, so the Friends of the Library do a lot for us as an organization with fundraising and publicity, and they have a space now to do their programming out of or have their meetings or hold book sales, so we're very happy to have that uh, in the new library. And <clears throat> They also can use the computers and there is a, a copier, a printer. Yes, we have a public copier, we have printing from the computer, so if you need a, you know, a public internet ready computer, you can use the computers here for that. We have computers in the adult section, the young adult room, children's room, so there are computers here for uh, all age ranges to use. Yeah, and I will tell you that one of the things that has impressed me is the wonderful light in here. I mean, your, your uh, Goodwin Library will feel like you were down in the root cellar. When you come in here, it is just, it's light. Uh-oh, don't say that, but yeah, it is nice natural light. I think, I think everyone will love. Um, and, and we would like one, Patrick and I would like yeah. one of you to tell us what the heck those na the name of those big windows up on top are. <laughs> he likes Celestory. I, I think it's Clerestory. I, I mess with cholesterol yeah. or cholesterol. Celery. Sue, would you just step over so that they can see you? <laughs> I don't mean to make you come on camera because I know this was not your first choice. But is there anything that we've talked about that you would like to either add to or anything that you can think of that we missed? Um, I would just like to add that I am very excited for the opportunities in the future to do adult programming, which is something that was lacking in the other buildings simply yes. because we didn't have the space. Um, we're very fortunate to live in an area with a lot of <laughs> local authors. So I would love to do a community reads, um, get multiple copies of the book, pass them out, and then have the author come in and do a talk. Great. Um, I've got all kinds of ideas. I'd love to do a, a cookbook club. Um, oh. So I'm, I'm very excited about the, the possibilities now that we have the space. Luna told us when we were doing the children's section that she was an idea person. It sounds <laughs> like, Patrick, you've got two of them on your staff here. Absolutely. Which is a great blessing, I would think. Yes. Yeah. Good. We'll call it an afternoon then and say we appreciate the fact that you took the time to stay with us. And we'll see you for the next round of Hadley Matters, and I'll see most of you before that. Thanks again. Bye-bye. <laughs>